Hi, everyone, and welcome to MSK Science Spotlight. My name is Thomas Tamala, and I'm an assistant member in the Cancer Biology and Genetics Program at the Sloan Kettering Institute. As many of you know, this seminar series features lectures from today's leaders in basic and translational biomedical science. Uh, it is a hot day today in New York, which I suspect may at least in part be due to the hot data that we're about to see. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the talk, you can email them to the Office of Scientific Education and Training at OSET at MSKCC or by tweeting uh, to our Twitter handle at MSK, MSK Education. And these um, uh, sites will be shown here on the screen momentarily. Uh, questions will then be answered at the end of the program. For the best viewing experience, please use Google Chrome. If you are using Internet Explorer, please use version 11 or higher. If you experience any technical issues during the live stream, please lower the video resolution. You can do that by clicking on that uh, gear shift there on the, on the lower uh, right of the screen. All right, then to today's speaker, I'm really uh, pleased to welcome Dr. Sasha Rudensky, who is the chair of the uh, immunology program at the, at the Sloan Kettering Institute. In addition, he's the director of the Ludwig Center for Cancer Immunotherapy at MSK. And he's also a Howard Hughes Medical in Institute investigator. And his talk today is titled, A Cell Extrinsic Mechanism Limiting Immunity and Inflammation. Sasha, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Thomas, and uh, thank you for inviting me to participate uh, in this uh, uh, great series. I'm trying to see if I can advance my slides. Yes, I can. Um, and before I start, I would, uh, here are my uh, conflict disclosures. And uh, the cell extensive mechanism of control of immunity and inflammation I'm going to talk about today is um, a rare, a sort of unusual in biology mechanism of negative regulation and trans uh, of activity of uh, cells uh, in a particular system, in the immune system, in this case, by a specialized cell type. And this uh, means of negative regulation uh, is really found only in, in the immune system, in the adaptive immune system, and in central nervous system. In the adaptive immune system, this negative regulation in trance is mediated by a specialized lineage of cells known as uh, regulatory T cells. Uh, and the cells um, have been implicated in a variety of uh, physiologic and uh, uh, pathophysiologic processes uh, highlighted in the background in this uh, font. At the uh, core of biology of regulatory T cells lies a simple uh, regulatory network centered on a cytokine called interleukin-2. When uh, conventional or effector T cells are activated in response to T cell receptor uh, stimulus uh, and costimulatory receptor ligation, uh, cells become activated and produce uh, interleukin-2, a major growth factor for effector T cells. When T cell receptor is engaged uh, on regulatory T cells, uh, the cells do not produce interleukin-2, but these cells express high level of high affinity uh, receptor for interleukin-2, and the subunit, high affinity subunit, is known as CD25. Hence, the cells expand and suppression commences. Now, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, three laboratories, uh, Shimon Sakaguchi's laboratory, uh, Fred Ramsdell's laboratory, and Jason Fontino, at the time graduate student in my lab, um, and that's actually a recent photograph of Jason, uh, showed that uh, at the time novel uh, transcription factor, member of fork head transcription factor family encoded by X chromosome, uh, that was called FOXP3, is required for differentiation and function of regulatory T cells. And Jason has uh, uh, used um, 
extensively reverse genetics approaches and through the use of uh, first uh, FOXP3 reporter mice, he was able to show that T cell receptor signal and uh, interleukin-2 receptor signal are two signals that are critical for FOXP3 expression and therefore for differentiation of regulatory T cells. And subsequent work that was based largely on Jason's work by former uh, postdoctoral fellow Chi She, now in his own lab, uh, demonstrated that uh, this signals through T cell receptor and interleukin-2 receptor arranged in a sequential or, or temporally uh, ordered manner, where T cell receptor signal results in changes in gene expression, including upregulation of high affinity receptor for interleukin-2. And now these precursor cells that lack fox p 3 expression upon exposure to interleukin-2 can upregulate up fox p 3 and become uh, regulatory T cells. So uh, interleukin-2, uh, uh, See, uh, to, to us seem to serve as a niche factor for regulatory T cells. And recent work from Saskia Hammers in the lab showed that uh, the key producers of interleukin-2, the niche factor for regulatory T cells during their differentiation in the thymus, is a subset of mature thymocytes with self-reactive uh, T cell receptors. Saskia found through uh, genetic fate mapping efforts, single cell RNA sequencing, through modeling the process of differentiation of regulatory T cells in vitro and in vivo, and using genetic tools, uh, ablating uh, uh, expression of uh, interleukin 2 in different uh, subsets of. Uh, T cells of different degree of maturity, she was able to demonstrate that upon receiving T cell receptor signal, uh, CD4 single positive thymocytes can upregulate CD25, and the cells can also produce IL2, and this IL2 is being produced either in paracrine or autocrine manner, and uh, some of the cells that experienced interleukin-2 uh, 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 gene activation would become FOXP3 positive cells and may receive autocrine signal. Some of them will proceed and likely become self-reactive CD4 T cells in the periphery when they may produce interleukin-2 for consumption by peripheral regulatory T cells. And a number of the cells likely die by apoptosis that is induced in response to T cell receptor signal. So I'm telling you this uh, rather um, elaborate scenario just to emphasize one simple point that generation of regulatory T cells is scaled by self-reactivity, namely by uh, self-reactive thymocytes that serve as a source of key niche factor interleukin-2 by the cells. Therefore, the size of the suppressive population is proportional to the size of potentially pathogenic pool of cells that can cause autoimmunity. FOXP3 mutations in mice and men result in fatal autoimmune and inflammatory disease. In uh, humans, this disease is known as IPEX syndrome, and IPEX stands for immune dysregulation, polyendocrinopathy, enteropathy, X-linked. Uh, the boys that are affected by this disease are presented with a wide range of early onset autoimmune and inflammatory manifestations, ranging from neonatal uh, onset diabetes to uh, thyroiditis, severe uh, dermatitis as shown here, hyper IG syndrome, anemia, and so on. And actually some of these patients received bone marrow transplantation at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, as, um, as I was told. Similarly, severe disease is unobserved in fox 3 deficient mice. Um, and these are mice that were made by Jason Fenton a long time ago. Again, wide range autoimmune manifestations and deaths by four weeks of age um, on different genetic backgrounds. Uh, and uh, work by Jason showed that essentially all manifestations of this uh, fatal disease are linked to deficiency in regulatory T cells. Not only regulatory T cells are required uh, early on uh, in postnatal, uh, uh, in neonatal development and mice and men, 
work from the lab uh, showed that uh, there is a lifelong requirement for regulatory T cells. So if you will, regulatory T cells are guardians for life. Uh, and that was demonstrated by John Kim in the lab when um, he uh, generated and analyzed mice that harbor ablatable uh, FOXP3 allele that uh, encodes endogenous FOXP3 allele that encodes diphtheria toxin receptor fused to GFP and ablation uh, of this uh, uh, subset of T cells in adult mice results in their rapid demise and my monstrous lymph and myeloproliferative syndrome. And this was observed not only in SPF mice, uh, microbiota sufficient mice, but also in germ-free mice as was shown by the Katoshi Chinen in the lab, suggesting that it's not a cohabitation of commensal microbial community that is uh, imposing this uh, requirement for such a mechanism of negative regulation. Uh, I, I analysis of uh, fox specific deficient mice, uh, humans, and mice subjected to ablation of regulatory T cells show that regulatory T cells suppress all three major types of pro-inflammatory responses, so-called type 1, type 2, and type 3 inflammatory response associated with production of different uh, families of cytokines and leading to different types of inflammatory lesions. So while this experiment done in the lab over a considerable period of time showed that regulatory T cells are absolutely essential for preventing severe autoimmune inflammatory disease in mice and men, the question has been raised and not answered uh, was whether regulatory T cells are capable of controlling and reversing established severe inflammation. And uh, there were a number of reasons given why that could be, including production of pro-inflammatory cytokines that were suggested to make effector, immune effector cells, innate and adaptive immune effector cells, insensitive to suppression. Uh, possibility that regulatory T cells may undergo uh, some kind of exhaustion, become dysfunctional in severe inflammatory settings, or lose FOX P3 expression, or maybe regulatory T cells don't um, uh, uh, don't migrate to the right side in inflamed uh, tissue, are kept out, um, and uh, in, in to our in our mind this this was major outstanding question in the field that was addressed by. Wei Hu, a fantastic postdoctoral fellow in the lab, jointly with Zhong Min Wang, a JSK graduate student in the lab, and a mice that they used were generated by Yong Feng before he left for his own lab to start his own lab at St. Jude. And Mikhail Shiz has helped with um, single cell and seq analysis in this experiment. So for these studies, uh, Wei and Zhong Min decided to use uh, a novel genetic tool, and that is reversible fox p reporter null allele that is um, shown here, whereby it's normal expression of fox p that can be uh, tracked by using JFP reporter was disrupted by introduction of log p uh, uh, side flux stop cassette preceded by a Taiwan point one reporter. So in this mice that express this reversible fox p reporter null allele, are, as you will see in a minute, uh, very sick, as sick as normal fox p deficient mice. And they harbor a population of cells uh, that are generated in response to fox p inducing signals that can be viewed as regulatory T cell wannabes. And the cells do not suppress. So then uh, what the idea was that uh, once the mice will get sick, uh, then uh, the stop cassette can be excised through tamoxifen inducible Kriri combinase that was expressed under control of endogenous CD4 T cell locus. So all CD4 T cells express um, uh, tamoxifen inducible Kriri combinase. 
and a way uh, 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 decided to administer a single shot of either 4-hydroxytamoxifen or tamoxifen in some experiments and uh, reverse uh, 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 this uh, um, and restore expression of FOXP3 in regulatory T cell wannabes. So this is the summary of uh, this experimental setup. So it worked really well. Uh, so if to look at the expression of FOXP3 versus TI 1.1, and this marks the wannabe cells, these are uh, mice that don't have an, uh, tamoxifen inducible creatine combinase treated with 4 hydroxytamoxifen. And this analysis is done on day seven after administration of a single shot of 4 hydroxytamoxifen. So nothing happens. But in mice where uh, CRE is activated, mice that express um, CRE. Are. Uh, now, within seven days, there is a population of regulatory T cells, and there are few remaining Ti 1.1 marked um, uh, regulatory T cell wannabes, and FOXP3 is uh, 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 judged by expression of GFP reporter. And these are control mice that are perfectly normal, not sick, where we use this FOXP3 DTR GFP allele just as a reporter of normal FOXP3 expression, and this mice also have CD4 CRER. So now what is happening uh, within four weeks after uh, restoration of regulatory T cell suppressor capacity through uh, uh, re-expression uh, of endogenous FOXP3 uh, uh, gene. So at two weeks of age, mice started dying, uh, mice that express this lock stop locks FOXP3 allele for brevity. And if they are given a tamoxifen in four weeks thereafter, you can see just by looking at the lymph node size of the spleen, uh, they're uh, going back to normal. Uh, so lymphoproliferative and myeloproliferative syndrome is restored. And this little globe is the thymus. And thymus cellularity is restored because in this mice, uh, uh, in two-week-old mice, sick mice, thymus is shrunk because of the massive uh, inflammatory, systemic inflammatory response that takes place. So not only the size of the second lymphoid organs is restored, restoration of functional regulatory T cells, reverses T cell activation, myeloproliferation, acute phase response and hyper IG syndrome. So all inflammatory manifestations that we can see and measure were restored to normality. And this is just showing this in red curves the behavior uh, of these parameters in mice with after restoration of functionality of regulatory T cells. Uh, not only that, but tissue inflammation that is already established at, uh, at the beginning of the experiment. And what you, you can uh, just simply focus on skin, and I show here skin, liver, and lung. And you can see that in control mice that cannot be reversed uh, um, so this, this is what's happening in the skin, and this is normal skin and control mice that express functional FOXP3 allele and uh, CRE R uh, encoded by CD4 locus. Um, uh, and, uh, and this is the beginning that is essentially indistinguishable in mice with reversible uh, FOXP3 allele and uh, CRE R. So within four weeks, skin inflammation is normalized lung inflammation is reversed, skin inflammation is reversed, and uh, mice uh, can uh, last for a very long time. So this is, this is survival curve. At this point, uh, we terminated experiment, not to uh, uh, overburden our already uh, overburdened mouse bill. Uh, and you can see that this mice that were subjected to uh, a restoration of functionality in a single cohort of, uh, a regulatory, t of, of regulatory T cell wannabes um, over a period of 48 hours or so uh, are capable of preventing autoimmunity and supporting this mice uh, over seven months and then the rest of the mice die. And this drop here is because already at this two week time point of administration, some mice are uh, beyond the return point of no return. So what then we uh, decided and, and Jongmin decided to do is to uh, analyze mice uh, in this mice 
um, that were treated at two weeks for 4 hydroxytamoxifen, and then in seven months, then uh, this, this mice, they survived for seven months, were analyzed. And uh, what they found was that uh, population of regulatory T cells in the cell cell mice is maintained, as shown here by this red circles. Um, this population is stable. Uh, it doesn't decline. It maintains FOX3 expression, and it's functional. And in control mice, that is shown here uh, in, um, in uh, field uh, blue circles, uh, these mice uh, have a wild type population of regulatory T cells that was also uh, um, fate mapped or time stamped, if you will. Uh, then these cells uh, are replaced by recent, by new, newly generated cells, but some of them still persist so that there are these cells whose uh, progeny, that cells that were labeled at two weeks of age, and their progeny persist uh, up to seven months. Um, so then the next uh, thing that uh, Wei and Zhongmin did were to analyze the features of this regulatory T cell persisters uh, in uh, FOXP3 LSL mice, where uh, regulatory T cells were restored, and then control mice. And uh, because the cells are fate mapped, uh, that is that the cells uh, were uh, tagged with uh, uh, recombination reporter allele ROSA26 um, uh, log stop log stamata. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, this analysis showed that uh, this restored uh, long lasting persisting regulatory T cells that were uh, restored in um, FOXP3 LSL mice resemble uh, similarly long lived cells in, uh, that harbor normal uh, regulatory T cell uh, uh, population uh, that was uh, uh, labeled with diphtheriotoxin receptor JFP um, allele. And, and these are tamate and negative cells that are generated in uh, sort of non-long-lived uh, cells. So these are younger cells, these are older cells. Through the analysis of the cells, and you may see that there is this uh, blob of the cells that uh, appear here that we think are likely the source of, and then uh, differentiation uh, and um, uh, a the diffusion uh, a trajectories uh, uh, analysis showed that these are the cells that give rise to uh, uh, more terminally differentiated cells. Uh, so this, this uh, cell population is relatively sparse uh, in uh, control uh, mice, but uh, by uh, using gene expression um, analysis and inferring uh, critical markers Wei and Zhongmin were able to identify a panel of markers that would identify in normal mice this uh, long-term persisting regulatory T cell population that we call TRAC persisters, if you will. This is relatively small proportion, but uh, uh, can be found in secondary lymphoid organs and spleen and uh, lymph nodes. Uh, they are lacking, largely lacking in the thymus, but they are also present at lower uh, frequencies uh, in uh, non-lymphoid organs. Together, this uh, result show that regulatory T cells are functional in settings of established broad spectrum inflammation, that a single cohort of regulatory T cells persists and provides long-term protection against autoimmunity with no signs of dysfunction, uh, or exhaustion, if you will. And uh, Wei and Zhongmin also were able to demonstrate that cells capable of long-term persistence and self-renewing are present in normal mice, where they represent a small fraction of regulatory T cell population uh, found in a peripheral lymphoid and non-lymphoid organs, but largely lacking in the thymus of normal mice. So now uh, I would like to discuss um, the process of uh, differentiation and to focus on cues, two major cues, T cell receptor signal and interleukin 2 signal that guides regulatory T cell fate decision and how they converge on the FOXP3 gene locus 
uh, to establish uh, regulatory T cell lineage and maintain regulatory T cell lineage. This will be a summary of published work and some unpublished work uh, from a number of people in the lab. This project started now a long time ago by former lab member Ye Zeng, who is now at Solk. Um, he was postdoctoral fellow and graduate student Chief Steve Josefovich, who is now assistant professor at Cornell, uh, continued with Yong Feng. Uh, who is now in St. Jude, and postdoctoral fellow Joris van der Wicken and graduate student Stas Dickey in the lab. Uh, so what I showed you uh, is that our, our, uh, um, is the map of four uh, enhancers uh, whose function in biology of regulatory T cells we explored reasoning that uh, this uh, regulatory elements may give us cues into um, signals uh, that uh, commit cells to um, regulatory T cell lineage and provide additional sites into biology of regulatory T cells. So I will summarize this uh, um, studies in the next few slides. So uh, Jung and Stas found uh, uh, that CNS3 and CNS4, CNS3 is an intronic enhancer of the FOXP3 gene, and CNS4 is found in an intron of the upstream gene, uh, that these two enhancers are found in a poised uh, state and uh, with accessible chromatin in precursors of regulatory T cells. Both of these enhancers assist establishment of a poised state of the FOXP3 promoter and precursor cells and facilitate FOXP3 induction in regulatory T cell precursors, expression of FOXP3, but are dispensable uh, for the maintenance of FOXP3 gene expression and differentiated regulatory T cells. CNS3 lowers the threshold of T cell receptor signals that permissive for differentiation uh, of regulatory T cells uh, and broaden uh, and, and uh, as a um, result of activity of, of CNS3, regulatory T cells are capable of expressing a diverse repertoire of T cell receptors that enables them to ensure effective control of autoimmunity. Uh, this uh, element binds transcription factor serial downstream of T cell receptor signal. And we believe that uh, T cell receptor signals converge on this element to establish a poised state of uh, FOXP3 promoter. Uh, in contrast, CNS4 facilitates interleukin-2 dependent step in FOXP3 induction and this two-step model of regulatory T cell lineage commitment. Um, and uh, it contains two conserved uh, STAT5 binding sites. And actually this element is the first site where STAT5 binds during uh, induction of FOXP3 gene expression. And we believe that CNS4 facilitates this IL-2 dependent step of FOXP3 expression to ensure robustness of differentiation of regulatory T cells, a particular under suboptimal conditions during neonatal period and enforces autoimmune uh, immune tolerance in genetic backgrounds uh, with predisposition to autoimmunity. So these two elements are operational in precursor cells. And I said, I told you that they are dispensable for the maintenance of FOXP3 gene expression. And, um, be, and uh, another in intronic enhancer, uh, CNS2, we believe is the enhancer that acts to maintain cell identity in differentiated regulatory T cells uh, and it's, um, uh, it's inactive in precursor cells and recently generated regulatory T cells when FOXP3 is just induced. Uh, but uh, this enhancer becomes activated uh, uh, and this activation induced upon uh, demethylation of 12 CPGs found in this enhancer. And that results in an enhancer switch where CNS4 becomes dispensable and CNS2 takes upon itself uh, the function of maintaining FOXP3 expression that is essential during division of mature regulatory T cells. And this, this is uh, shown here schematically. CNS2 function, inheritable maintenance of 
regulatory T cell lineage is uh, essential when interleukin two, a key signal that commits cells to regulatory T cell fate is limiting. And in the presence of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and these are cues that promote alternative cell fate, namely differentiation of effector T cells. So this way, CNS2 allows for the um, maintenance uh, um, uh, of the cell fate under conditions uh, where inducing Q that promoted the cell fate is limiting or alternative cell Q that would promote alternative cell fate as, as present. So finally, um, analysis of the last uh, intronic enhancer that I mentioned to you, CNS1, allowed us to pinpoint and better understand uh, functional consequences of ontogenic heterogeneity of regulatory T cells. We know that regulatory T cells can be generated in the thymus and can be generated extratymically when naive CD4 T cells, when exposed to strong T cell receptor signal in the presence of high amounts of TGF beta and interleukin 2 can upregulate FOXP3 gene expression. A uh, work by Ye Zeng and Steve Josefovich and Rachel Nies showed that this particular enhancer is dispensable for, extra, for timing differentiation of regulatory T cells, but uh, supports extra timing differentiation of regulatory T cells. Um, uh, quite fittingly, CNS1 contains a TGF beta response element, smart binding site and fat binding site and fat activated downstream of T cell receptor signaling and retinoic acid receptor binding site and retinoic acid signaling also supports extratimic differentiation of regulatory T cells. All, all, all this um, enhancers, uh, the way we analyze them in, in uh, we generate uh, conditional and constitutive alleles for this um, enhancers. And all of them are equipped with fluorescent uh, reporter uh, GFP that we can track regulatory T cell development. So analysis of CNS1 deficient mice showed that uh, uh, the intestine, gastrointestinal tract is the uh, uh, major uh, site of at least numerically um, where the bulk of extratimic regulatory T cells or so-called PTRX cells are generated. And this uh, tool, CNS1 deficient mice, al allowed us to explore a uh, function uh, of, uh, of exotimic uh, regulatory T cells, and that was done as either germ-free and SPF, CNS1 deficient mice, uh, and work from um, Rachel Nee, Steve Josefovich, uh, Clarissa Campbell, uh, uh, Nick Arpaia, uh, uh, Peter McKinney, and Stas Dickey showed that under physiologic conditions, CNS1 dependent generation of extra thymic regulatory T cells or PTRX enables for assembly of beneficial commensal microbial community. And that uh, and this assembly of beneficial microbial community is characterized by a beneficial metabolic function of the intestine and microbiota and uh, that under physiologic conditions, extratimically generated regulatory T cells support um, a metabolic function of the super organ intestine uh, colonized with commensal microbial community. Uh, microbial metabolites, uh, short chain fatty acids, as was shown by Nick, and secondary bile acids, particular uh, uh, um, members of the second bile acid metabolite uh, class as was shown by uh, Clarissa Campbell and Peter McKinney uh, allows for uh, more efficient generation of extra thymic regulatory T cells. And once they're generated, they can also uh, prevent uh, 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 development of intestinal type two allergic inflammation in the gut. So now uh, I would like to uh, go back to uh, FOXP3 um, and discuss its role as uh, regulatory T cell lineage specifying transcription factor. So work uh, by Jason Fontenot and Mark Gavin showed that um, uh, 
uh, when they compare regulatory T cell wannabes, and this is different uh, reporter null allele that Mark Gavin generated now uh, uh, a long time ago, 13 years ago, two uh, cells that express FOXP3 uh, reporter allele showed that uh, uh, regulatory T cells that express FOXP3 protein um, uh, are endowed with suppressor function and are fit, uh, whereas this regulatory T cell wannabes are unfit. Um, but they do express increased level of interleukin-2 uh, receptor. Furthermore, uh, loss of uh, FOXP3 expression in differentiated regulatory T cells, as was shown by Luke Williams now some time ago, uh, graduate student in the lab, resulted in a loss of uh, fun functionality and identity and this former regulatory T cells or x -tirac cells um, become potentially pathogenic because they uh, are, are expressing self-reactive uh, T cell receptors. Uh, furthermore, transduction of non-regulatory T cells with retrovirus as was done uh, by Jason Fontenot now almost 20 years ago with FOXP3 would confer suppressor function to non-regulatory T cells. So by all uh, this criteria, we believe regulatory T FOXP3 is serving a role of regulatory T cell lineage specifying transcription factor. How that, does it work? Um, work from uh, the lab, now also old work from the lab and Depine Ruder at that time, postdoctoral fellow in the lab, purified FOXP3 complexes, subjected them to um, uh, uh, size exclusion chrom uh, 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 chromatography, separated them, uh, showed that they are very large, um, uh, heterogeneous, and contain a number of partners, including uh, uh, components of major chromatin remodeling complexes, raising a possibility that FOXP3 may be acting as a pioneer factor, binds to certain sites. Uh, in the genome and, and sets unique transcriptional and epigenetic uh, features of regulatory T cells. That turned out to be wrong because when um, uh, Robbie Samstein, Aaron Arvi, and Steve Josefovich explored uh, um, FOXP3 binding uh, by combination of DNA is hypersensitive uh, site sequencing combined with digital footprinting and FOXP3 chip sequencing uh, in precursor cells and regulatory T cells, and also looked at um, binding of additional transcription factors, they found that FOXP3 by and large binds to preformed sites in the genome. So sites that are occupied by ads and trunks uh, family members that, that um, we found in association with FOXP3, or sites that are prepared and become open and accessible to FOXP3 in the process of induction of FOXP3 gene in response to T cell receptor signals and interleukin-2 signals that pre precede FOXP3 expression. So, Yuri uh, uh, van der Wicken, Ariela Glasner, and Yi Zong decided to uh, come back to uh, the question of how FOXP3 functions um, and uh, use uh, a different approach. So they decided to leverage a natural genetic variation uh, in F1 genomes of evolutionary distant mice by combining uh, a laboratory mouse genome with evolutionary distant genome of wild derived mouse strains, either uh, Mus castaneus or Mus spratus. So this wild derived mice separated from uh, mice that gave rise to laboratory mouse strains more than a million years ago, and they harbor incredibly dense uh, SNPs, uh, densely, um, uh, and harbor uh, incredibly dense SNP coverage across their genomes. So what this allows to do, and this was set up by Yoris and Izong in their previous studies of um, uh, CDA T cells. It allows us to perturb cis regulatory, to explore cis regulatory mechanisms um, uh, uh, that control gene expression in, uh, and uh, to uh, dissociate from trans effects because we will look uh, at the effects on single genome. And we uh, do not interfere with uh, breakdown and transcription factor network that uh, would, com would be common from uh, two 
um, reverse genetics type of approaches. Um, so this is, this is an example uh, of, of what we are looking for. We are looking at, say, F1 mouse between uh, black six and castaneous F1. And uh, by sequencing, we can assign the reads, uh, say, by a taxic or an RNA seq or any type of high throughput analysis to one or another allele. And uh, the question, of course, was whether we can identify enough of this allelically imbalanced uh, chromatin accessible sites, transcripts, and so on, and, and there are plenty. So in CD8 cells, we can, there are about five, uh, more than 5,000 transcripts that are allelically imbalanced, and there are almost 9,000 chromatin accessible sites that are imbalanced. So there is enough power for this approach to proceed. And uh, what um, E and uh, uh, Yoris uh, were looking at in their first setup is uh, they, they were comparing sites that have imbalance in uh, 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 a toxic signal and looking at mutations in transcription factor binding motifs that are enriched at the sites. Uh, and there will be uh, the, the transcription factors that will be uh, implicated in installing a particular features, transcriptional features or epigenetic features at a given site. And this, this would be compared to control peaks. So this is, this is the genetic setup for these experiments. Uh, female mice, uh, and uh, mind, uh, I would like to remind you that Fox P3 gene is uh, X uh, chromosome encoded gene. Uh, one has GF GFPDTR allele, and another has this uh, a reporter null allele, GFP knockout allele. So this F1 mice are perfectly healthy females, and they were bred with uh, castaneous males. So this breeding would generate litter mates that would have that either males that would have a reporter null allele, F1 males. These males will be sick, or uh, their uh, uh, litter mates that will be healthy and that will have GFP DTR uh, allele and heterozygote females, uh, uh, all of them healthy that would have a wild type FOXP3 allele and reporter null allele or a GFP DTR functional allele and wild type. So just for the sanity check shown here in uh, faint gray, uh, this is the death curve of uh, survival uh, curve for males harboring uh, a GFP uh, reporter null allele. And you notice that they die at later time, but this is not because they exhibit less inflammation. It's because they, uh, they, they exhibit a hybrid trigger, vigor, um, uh, and uh, that they can just leave uh, longer with uh, severe uh, inflammatory uh, uh, lesions. And, and this is uh, just how a secondary lymphoid organs look uh, in, in this mice. So, well, first thing uh, to do for uh, E and Yoris and Ariella was to identify um, transcripts and cis regulatory elements, uh, chromatin accessible sites that are specific to regulatory T cells. They isolated regulatory T cells and their uh, so-called conventional T con or TC means conventional T cell counterparts. And they were broken to activated and resting regulatory T cells and activated and resting conventional cells uh, based on expression of these uh, markers. They were sorted and subjected to RNA sequencing and uh, attack sequencing, chromatin accessibility assay. And as uh, shown here in comparison of resting regulatory T cells, resting conventional cells, there are plenty of um, differentially accessible sites. There are plenty of uh, 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 differential chromatin accessibility in these two comparisons. And there are still plenty of unactivated regulatory T cells were compared to activated conventional cells with approximately 10,000 diff uh, differentially accessible sites in these different comparisons. Uh, and then R stands for regulatory T cells and C stands for conventional cells and first R for resting and A for activated. So the next thing that what uh, E has done was to look at transcription factor binding motif requirements 
for uh, regulatory T cell specific chromatin accessible sites. Um, and that what uh, he was looking. So this is, this is black six uh, alleles are shown in blue schematically and cast in red. Uh, and uh, uh, so that black six is always uh, um, a reference allele and cast is alternative allele. And by looking at this differential accessible peaks, uh, looking at the enrichment at motif enrichment, and looking at the stronger match of motif on black six, like shown here, we identify a transcription factor motif that is active in black six at this particular site. And that can be done for attack sequencing analysis, for chip sequencing, cut and run, and whatever any other readout. And what we are looking at here is at uh, uh, cumulative distribution function or cumulative fraction of peaks uh, that are uh, harboring this motif. And this motif is stronger match on black six allele at this sets of ataxic peaks. Uh, then it will shift to the right because we are looking here at allelic ratio of black six reads over uh, castaneous reads. And uh, this delta mean, uh, the difference be uh, between uh, uh, motif being stronger on cast and motif stronger on black six reflects on activity of the motif in particular cell type and particular state. How does it look? So this is a real example. Now, if we are looking at motif for activating transcription factors, such as ETS family member, and here it's ETS1, and the motif is shown here, this motif is stronger on black six, and you see shift in allelic ratio of black six over cast towards right. And if motif is stronger on cast, then this curve is shifted uh, to the left. So that means that it's activating motif. And for Icarus family member motifs, such as IKZF1 motif, Icarus itself, you can see that this is flipped. So if motif is stronger on uh, uh, black six, uh, then, and it's a depressor, then the allelic ratio of uh, reads uh, will, will be shifted towards left and the other way around. So this is just explanation for the type of data I'm going to show you in the coming up slides. So with this in mind, uh, uh, E uh, analyzed uh, essentially a, a transcription factor binding motif requirement for all regulatory T cell specific uh, 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 chromatin accessible sites. And uh, this, this is a bit complicated and busy slide. It shows delta mean allelic ratio that I just explained to you with uh, 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 colors of red showing up um, uh, positive regulation activation and blue uh, repression. The size of the dot uh, reflects log p value, a log 10 p value. And this is the four-way comparison of cells, resting regulatory T cells versus conventional cells, activated regulatory T cells versus resting regulatory T cells, and so on. And uh, instead of uh, uh, looking at this slide for extended period of time, what I would just uh, highlight a few points, that most motifs have positive uh, effect on chromatin accessibility, and that I show you by just pointing to motifs for depressive motifs, and this is perhaps uh, quite expectedly, uh, Icarus family motif, YY1, and some zinc finger uh, family transcription factor motifs, but most of them are activated. Some motifs show constitutive activity, and that is ETS family members, as shown here in red, uh, and it's consistent with the major role for these family members in establishment uh, of identity of uh, T cell lineage, but also some other lineages. And then there are some motifs that show peak or group and cell type specific activity. And that's, for example, as shown illustrated here for uh, SOX motif. 
Um, and that you may uh, uh, know that it's uh, actually much less active in both activating and resting, activated and resting regulatory T cells than in their conventional counterparts. And I will spend some time to talk, uh, talking about this. And uh, I also would like to know that forecat motif doesn't have much of impact on chromatin accessibility. So uh, this slide shows, uh, just reiterates the point, but shows it uh, better. And that is that uh, SOX motif um, is, uh, act its activity is reduced in regulatory T cells. This is, uh, we are looking essentially at this delta mean uh, and it shows that in resting regulatory, uh, in resting conventional cells, SOX motif is more active than in um, resting regulatory T cells and in activated conventional cells, it's more active and then uh, in activated regulatory T cells. And this tracks beautifully with the level, with the level of expression of a major SOX family member expressed in T cells, TCF1. And this is, there are two really uh, members of uh, SOX uh, family that are expressed at a significant level in T-cells LF1 and TCF1, and essentially it shows a linear uh, dependence of the level of uh, TCF1 uh, expression um, in uh, uh, activated and resting regulatory T-cells and conventional and resting, uh, activated and resting conventional T-cells and uh, its uh, activity. So, uh, Together, this analysis showed that regulatory T cell specific accessible chromatin regions are regulated by multiple transcription factor binding uh, motifs and therefore multiple transcription factor families that include ETS, RUNGS, IRF, and SOX family members. SOX motif variation preferentially affects chromatin accessibility of conventional T cells, and that correlates with down regulation of TCF1 in regulatory T cells. What about FOXP3 that I said that FOXP3 um, forecat motif was not enriched at differentially accessible sites uh, in regulatory T cells that are resting or activated? So with this, Yoris, uh, uh, Ariella, um, and Ariella performed uh, both FOXP3 cut and run experiment and FOXP3 chip sequencing experiment just to make sure that we are not missing anything. And uh, this, this is the uh, screenshot of, uh, uh, this, is, this is a browser, a genome browser sh uh, sh uh, uh, view of some of the regions where FOXP3 binds, it's binding of FOXP3, this is uh, chromatin accessibility, and, 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 and this is RNA at, at this locus. And just for a reason, I show you that this is actually TCF7 locus, locus that encodes uh, TCF1 protein. So that analysis of genome-wide motif, gen genome-wide analysis of a transcription factor motif enrichment uh, and allelic imbalance show that actually forecat motifs does do contribute to binding of uh, FOXP3 protein that was encouraging, and so were BZIP uh, family members and ETS family members. Um, and however, uh, FOXP3 binding, uh, where motif affected FOXP3 binding, binding of FOXP3 didn't affect accessibility of the sites that it's bound consistent with our earlier data. So now with this, uh, Yoris and Ariella turn to analysis of FOXP3 dependent transcriptional and epigenetic features of regulatory T cells by comparison of regulatory T cell wannabes, cells that express FOXP3 reporter null allele and cells that express functional FOXP3 reporter allele. So this was done using this heterozygote females where from healthy mice, regulatory T cell uh, wannabes here, FOXP3 GFP knockout allele GFP positive cells can be isolated and uh, cells that express FOXP3 protein can be isolated. And they were again divided into 
cells with activated and trusting phenotype for both wannabes and regulatory T cells. And uh, this just reflects percentages of, of the cells in, in this mice. So <clears throat> now, analysis of this mice should be able to show us whether FOXP3, although it doesn't, its binding does not affect accessibility of the site it binds to, can influence chromatin accessibility across the genome in regulatory T cells. And <clears throat> this analysis showed that FOXP3 does influence, has a major impact on um, what you would call epigenetic identity, chromatin accessibility, and gene expression in regulatory T cells in a FOXP3 dependent manner, but it does so in a largely indirect manner. That's what I mean as shown here. So here it's a differential chromatin accessibility, and we are comparing here on the x-axis um, resting uh, wannabe cells that express reporter null allele, and here are regulatory T cells that express functional uh, FOXP3 reporter allele. And there are about 1,000 sites that are up and 1,700 sites that are down. But the sites that are bound by FOXP3 are not any different. The same tr is true for uh, activated regulatory T cells when compared to activated regulatory T cell wannabes. Again, there is 6,000 differentially uh, accessible sites that are uh, increased in a FOXP3 dependent manner in regulatory T cells or down regulated in FOXP3 dependent manner. But if in red we show sites that are bound by FOXP3, then they are really not affected significantly. There are many fewer sites that are affected. Uh, even uh, more astonishingly, the same is true for transcripts. And these are differential, uh, differentially expressed transcripts shown in black between resting regulatory T cells and uh, wannabes. And again, in red are shown bound sites. And these uh, this are uh, uh, differential, uh, differentially expressed transcripts in black all uh, between activated regulatory T cells and activated regulatory T cell wannabes. And in red, uh, you see the ones that are bound by FOXP3. So uh, what this says that FOXP3 binds in a forehead dependent, motif dependent manner, but it doesn't affect uh, in genome-wide analysis, uh, the transcript level or accessibility of the sites it binds to if uh, all the sites are being analyzed. So if you go back to SOX motif that I told you was um, uh, less active in regulatory T cells, this reduction in activity of SOX motif uh, was FOXP3 dependent. So this is comparison of um, uh, regulatory T cell wannabes with regulatory T cells, and you can see that the SOX motif is enriched at uh, sites that are um, less accessible, uh, less accessible in regulatory T cells. Uh, so it's because it's off diagonal, and th this is uh, access, uh, this is motif enrichment at sites that are less accessible in resting regulatory T cells versus uh, um, uh, regulatory T cell wannabes. So the sites where uh, chromatin accessibility is reduced in the FOXP3 dependent manner. So that suggested that perhaps what FOXP3 does, it represses. It I showed you that it binds to TCF7. And there are multiple binding sites for FOXP3 and TCF7's locus, and that, that results in TCF1, lower level of expression of TCF1, and that results in uh, reduced accessibility of chromatin. So it's not uh, actively repressed, it's lack of activator or dilution of the activator, diminished amount of activator that caused this. And that is, uh, uh, that is reflected here at the, uh, that this slide shows diminished uh, uh, level of uh, uh, TCF1 expression in regulatory T cells expressing FOXP3, and, and that doesn't happen in, uh, in regulatory T cell wannabes. So FOXP3 uh, seem to uh, repress um, expression 
of uh, TCF7 gene that encodes TCF1. We can further demonstrate that FOXP3 is necessary and sufficient for TCF1 downregulation by using the SMICE that I described to you, where expression of FOXP3 can be acutely induced upon treatment of 4 hydroxytamoxifen And what Wei has done in this experiment was to look at the early genes that are uh, changed in their expression within uh, 72 hours, uh, within a very short period of time after uh, uh, a removal of um, uh, stop cassette induced by 4-hydroxytamoxifen treatment. And, uh, uh, and uh, TCF7 uh, was among these genes. So TCF7 uh, is repressed uh, early by FOXP3, and we also found that it's repressed in newly generated uh, regulatory T cells in the thymus. So, uh, and uh, to confirm, uh, uh, Yoris has, uh, and Ari performed TCF1 uh, uh, cut and run uh, analysis uh, in a regulatory T cell and regulatory T cell wannabes. This is analysis of, this is just the tracks to show uh, the quality of the data. This is FOXP3 binding. Uh, this is uh, TCF1 binding. Uh, in wannabes, in uh, regulatory T cells, this is attack sequencing signal, and this, this is uh, RNA for uh, one of the uh, bound genes. And this is genome-wide uh, analysis of this. Each dot represents a specific site. And this is a log two TCF1 counts in um, regulatory T cell wannabes and uh, in regulatory T cells from the same sites. And you can appreciate how these dots are shifted down and it's amazingly quantitative. Let's say, crudely speaking, we see about twofold decrease in the level of uh, TCF1 expression in um, regulatory T cells in a FOXP3 dependent manner. And we see similar fall decrease in signal from TCF cut and run in, in the cells. And indeed, when uh, uh, we looked at the um, uh, chromatin accessibility and the X axis shows chromatin accessibility count, and this is the ratio of uh, change in uh, um, chromatin accessibility in regulatory T cells versus in uh, reporter null cells, you would appreciate that uh, at sites that were bound TCF1 and FOXP3 bound, there is not much changing. Where FOXP3 only binds, not much to change. But in TCF1 only bound sites, there is a reduced uh, accessibility in regulatory T cells, and this is reflected here. The amazing part of it is that this reduced accessibility in TCF1 only bound sites accounts for about 50% of sites where chromatin accessibility is changed in regulatory T cells in a FOXP3 dependent manner. Um, what about sites that are uh, showing increased accessibility in FOXP3 dependent manner? These sites are enriched for BZIP and IRF family member motifs. And these motifs are shown here. Uh, the, and also, so that the, among the motifs are an F kappa B motif, BATF, which is a, a combination APF. I mean, AP1 um, IRF motif. And uh, indeed, uh, 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 the um, analysis that I don't have uh, time to show, uh, cut and run uh, for um, IRF4 and um, CJUN in uh, regulatory T cell and regulatory T cell wannabes showed uh, more uh, prominent uh, binding of, of this transcription factors to uh, sites with higher, uh, uh, to sites that uh, show increased accessibility in fox specific dependent manner in regulatory T cells. So what this data suggested that uh, fox specific acts in a largely indirect manner to establish regulatory T cell lineage identity through a regulatory relay um, whereby uh, fox specific uh, mediates repression of TCF1 and we would be careful whether it's direct. We think it's likely direct, but uh, uh, it can be still um, indirect. Uh, but uh, through repression of uh, TCF1, reduced levels of TCF1 then would result in reduced accessibility and activity of a number of genes. Whereas induced uh, in enhanced activity of AP1 and IRF family members 
would result in uh, uh, increased accessibility and expression in another set of genes. And there will be a set of genes that will be unchanged, the ones that would show uh, an overlap. Together, this data suggests a, a sort of a trans model, if you will, of late differentiation. Uh, guided largely indirectly uh, by a lineage specifying transcription factor, uh, FOXP3 in this case. And uh, in a purely speculative uh, mode, I would like to draw a, a parallel uh, that it may be analogous in some ways to domination of trans effects that as observed in intraspecies evolution of transcriptional regulation, as opposed to cis effect dominance in uh, uh, that uh, that is prevalent in interspecies evolution um, of uh, regulatory elements and, and gene regulation. Um, I would like to finish by uh, acknowledging essentially all current members of the lab, former members of the lab and uh, collaborators both over uh, now 12 years uh, at Sloan Kettering and outside Sloan Kettering and uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Thanks very much, Sasha. This was a really uh, fantastic talk. Uh, so much interesting data. Uh, we're a little over time, but we are gonna do a few questions. Um, so um, let's start with the first part with the uh, um, regulation of FOXP3 expression. So based on your, your uh, so there, there's a comment about um, it being somewhat surprising that there isn't, there aren't FOXP3 binding sites uh, on FOXP3 itself. And therefore, would one expect transient expression of FOXP3 not to be sufficient to reprogram CD4 T cells to T regs? Yeah, it, it's a good question. So the, there is a site of, there is a FOXP3 binding site within the okay. FOXP3 locus that we have identified now many years ago, 10 years ago. And that is in um, in CNS2 uh, cis regulatory element, maintenance regulatory element. At that time, we speculated that maybe this binding is essential to maintain uh, FOXP3 expression. FOXP3 binds there indirectly. It's being recruited by rungs. There is no forkhead binding site. There is a rungs binding site in this element. Um, actually, current data and tools that uh, we have developed suggest that maybe FOXP3 binding may not have a non-redundant indispensable role in the maintenance of FOXP3 gene. There is no this sort of enforcement uh, loop. We think that uh, continuous interleukin-2 signaling, um, because the CNS2 is that five binding site, uh, is of essence. And it's rather complex. It's sort of high complexity region with multiple a transcription factor binding sites uh, there. So I think that um, it will be hard to maybe tease out which one is uh, indispensable. And our evolving view is actually that sites with high complexity with multiple transcription factor binding sites are the ones where um, likely uh, individual transcription factor binding may not be critical and largely dispensable and certain actually regions with lower complexity are the most critical regions that regulate and tune gene expression. Okay, got it. That's, that's really interesting. Um, there's a question from uh, uh, Nick Joshi at Yale who is asking uh, about the restorable allele experiments. Um, would you expect those experiments to work the same way if the mice were thymectomized? Yes, I think that uh, we did this experiment. Uh, we also did the experiment where we blocked migration uh, of, of cells um, uh, using uh, just by blocking uh, S1P. Um, uh, one uh, receptor. Mm -hmm. So we have not done thymectomy experiment, but we know that we have done transfer experiment. When we transferred and did restoration after transfer, it worked perfectly well. I don't think that uh, uh, recent thymic immigrants are needed for this, or uh, restoration and thymus is needed. Okay. 
Okay, and so there's actually a related question uh, to that um, um, related to aging and thymic involution. So you, I guess you would expect the same to hold true then. Yes, uh, in fact, we found, and that was confirmed, that what we reported some time ago was subsequently confirmed by Diane Mattis and Christophe Dunois and further developed that in uh, adult mice, uh, thymic output uh, makes relatively, my, uh, under steady state physiologic conditions, contributes relatively little to the maintenance of peripheral pool of regulatory T cells, which seem to be uh, maintained largely through self-renewal. And that is not true for neonates. In okay. young mice, uh, the, this thymic output does contribute and displaces recently generated cells. Okay. Then there's a, um, a sort of a more general question about what is known about the different specificities of Tregs uh, in the periphery versus th uh, the thymic ones. So the thymic regulatory T cells uh, are specific to what is present in the thymus um, and peripheral what is present in the periphery. Uh, so uh, the thymic uh, regulatory T cells are mostly specific for self antigens that are present. Some of them are expressed in a manner dependent on expression of air autoimmune regulator gene. Uh, some probably are the ones that are constitutively uh, ex uh, ubiquitously expressed self antigens presented by dendritic cells and thymic medullary epithelial cells. Uh, um, Extra thymically generated regulatory T cells uh, uh, have specificity, significantly biased specificity towards dietary antigens and antigens encoded by members of commensal microbial community, that is in, in mice. To what extent uh, that is true for humans, uh, it's hard to tell because it's difficult to tell apart thymic and extra thymic. It's almost essentially impossible in humans to uh, uh, tell which one is extra thymically generated or thymically generated regulatory T cells. And the, extent of extra thymic differentiation in the humans is hard, it's hard to assess. Sure. Um, we're unfortunately running out of time, but I actually have a burning question myself related, maybe be a nice way to cap this off. This is a very elegant fundamental biology uh, on these very interesting immune cells. How do you how do you see the role of, uh, for example, adoptive Treg transfer therapies. Do you see that uh, there's a, a, a window uh, to engineer these cells using these types of approaches or mechanisms that you've identified here, for, for example, auto autoimmune uh, autoimmune disease? Yeah, well, I uh, I'm conflicted. One of my disclosures was uh, the, this company that is developing adaptive regulatory T cell therapies, and if I say that. I believe in them, then I would be uh, maybe inappropriately promoting uh, something I'm uh, involved uh, with. Um, but I, I think that um, the cells are involved in variety of processes uh, in zebrafish, um, a set of beautiful studies several years ago uh, supported what was found, what we found and reported earlier, uh, we and others, that is that regulatory T cells are involved in control of autoimmunity, control of tissue repair and tissue regeneration, major phenotype in zebrafish subjected to ablation, acute ablation of regulatory T cells of the type I showed you was uh, impaired uh, regeneration of retina, spinal cord, and so on, and uh, regulatory T cells that were part of this regeneration process were producing tissue repair factors, and that's similar to what we found earlier in mice. So I think that there are uh, uh, diverse applications that probably would go beyond autoimmunity and inflammation, but may extend to uh, even some degenerative diseases. Great. Well, um, thank you very much, Sasha. This was a great talk. 
Uh, and uh, we will have the next MSK Spotlight this Wednesday at the same time at 4.30. And our speaker will be uh, Dr. Joan Massage, the director of the Sloan Kettering Institute. And with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us and uh, have a nice rest of the week. Thank you.